Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's uh, open with a word of prayer. Morning. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for uh, for this day you blessed us with. This time we can come together, study your word again. We're just so uh, thankful for what you teach us through your word. Help us, Lord, to become more uh, more disciples. To come closer to you, Lord. And uh, truly to be a bright, shining light in this dark world. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, I want to begin by reading uh, the passage of Scripture that we're going to be uh, considering this morning in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Uh, before I do that, though, who. Uh, was, did I give an assignment last week? No, the week before. Just to read. Okay. He gave us this thing about to consider the joy. To consider about joy. Back to yeah. 5 verses 14 and 15. So, so far now we've looked at, <clears throat> at repentance. Follow me was the second command. Rejoice was the third command. And today we're going to be looking at let your light shine. Next week is honoring God's law and then be reconciled and then do not commit adultery. That'll, con that'll uh, complete the first series that we have. There's seven series in this study. So that takes uh, the first seven commands uh, through there. Today we're going to be looking at let your light shine. And uh, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16, it says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. So, let your light so shine before men that they may see your, what? Good, Good works. And glorify your Father in heaven. Would you tell me that verse, please, again? I missed it. Oh, I missed it. It's in your book. Not Matthew page. chapter 5. First page. I think the top of the page. All right, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Bible says in uh, 1 John, Chapter 1, verse 5. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This is a message which we have heard and declared to you that God is light. And in Him is no darkness at all. God is light. Jesus, in John chapter 8, verse 12, said, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Of the world. And then we read here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, where Jesus is talking to his disciples and he tells his disciples, which by the way includes us as well, he tells them, You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. God's desire for each one of us is that we become drawn so close and we walk so close with Christ. That we are a reflection of the light of the world. That we are reflecting His light to the world. The closer we walk with Jesus, the brighter our light will be. And the brighter our light is, the farther it will shine. Which will result in more people being drawn to Christ. That's why it's so important for us to be spending time daily in the Word of God and, and, and uh, being obedient to all the plans of Christ and living a life of righteousness and holiness before God and, and really enjoying that intimate relationship with Christ. That's why it is so important for us to walk close to God, to be close to Christ every day. Uh, it's like uh, there's a, a, a little 
I don't, I have it in my office. There's a little cross that, that I have. It's about that tall. And uh, on the front of it says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And we bought a lot of those crosses and took them over to, uh, to our kids at Grace House and Home House uh, a few years ago. The unique thing about that cross is that it goes in the dark. And the more it is exposed to the light, and the brighter the light that it's exposed to, the brighter it shines at night, and the longer it lasts. And that's a good analogy of, of our walking with Christ. The closer we are to Him, the longer that we're walking with Him, and the closer we're walking to Him, the brighter that light gets within us. And it's just like we glow in this dark world. And the more people can be drawn to Christ. Jesus tells us to let our light shine so that others may see our good works and glorify the Father in heaven. So God wants our light to shine through our good works. Our good works, not our good words. As we read in the chapter uh, of our book today, as you've read there, uh, we do a good work when we meet the basic needs in the life of another person and not take the credit for it. We allow our higher authorities to get the credit. We, when we do something for someone else, we're not doing it so that I can get the credit, so that I can look like I'm really the big guy. We're doing it so that God can get the glory. We give Him the praise. We give Him the credit for all that we do. And when we do that, and that person will be attracted by our good works, by our light, and will be more open to allow us to share our testimony, our witness with them, to share our faith with them, and to present the kingdom gospel to them. So that brings us to uh, the character quality that is associated with uh, letting your light shine. The character quality. Somebody tell me what that is now? Generosity. Generosity. Generosity, by the way, is the opposite of stinginess. <laughs> Generosity is the opposite of stinginess. So, what is generosity? Generosity is uh, three things I want us to, to see. Generosity. Demonstrating the nature of God by wisely reinvesting the resources that He has entrusted to us. Generosity. Demonstrating, demonstrating the nature of God by wisely reinvesting the resources that He has entrusted to us. God is a, is a loving God. God is a generous God. And we demonstrate His nature of love and generosity through our generosity. Second thing there is the result of focusing on God's riches rather than our resources. Psalm chapter 50 verse 10 says, For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. See, it all belongs to God to begin with. None of it's ours. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14. Indeed, heaven and the highest heavens belong to the Lord your God, also the earth with all that is in it. Now, some of you may recall this one in Job chapter 41 verse 11. God is speaking to Job and he says, Who has preceded me that I should pay him? Everything under heaven is mine. God owns it all. He owns it all. 
Then the third one is paying on the debt of love that every believer owes to the Lord. Paying on the debt of love that every believer owes to the Lord. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. So for God so loved, love, God so loved the world that he gave. You see how love and, and giving fit together? God loved the world so much that he gave. And we too should display a heart of love and be generous in our giving. Now there are several biblical words that describe the concept of, of generosity. Everybody get this? It's in your book. It's in your book. I got it. All three of those are in the book? All except for the bottom one. Paying on the debt of love that every believer owes to the Lord. Alright, let's look at uh, biblical words that describe the concepts that make up generosity. There's six of them. Uh, six of them. And that's, can you see that, Helen? Okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Then I can move over here more? Yes. Yeah? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> the first one is this. It's love. <clears throat> Biblical word, by the way, for love is charity. Okay. Huh? Charity. Charity? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a biblical word. Charity. That expresses itself in giving to the poor, the needy, being charitable. It's not, it, listen, it is, it, it's not possible to have love without generosity. Okay? However, it is possible to have generosity without love. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3, we, we all know 1 Corinthians 13 as the love chapter of the Bible. We often refer to it as the love chapter. And in verse 3, Paul says, Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I'm very generous in feeding the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Amen. The second one is this. The, the second biblical word that we that, uh, makes up generosity is uh, sowing. Sewing. That's O W, not S E W. I do both. And he's a so and so. So yeah. He's a so and so. Whoa. Okay. Sewing. So, see what 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 generosity does? Generosity follows really the law of harvest. Follows the law of harvest. The more generous we are in sowing, the greater the harvest will be in true riches. Second Corinthians. Chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. The law of sowing and reaping. And then the third one is, uh, the third word is honor. Honor. The, the Greek word for honor is timao. It's timao, T-I-M-A-O. It means to place value upon. To honor someone is to place value upon that individual. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, that we are to honor, that is, we're to place value on our father and mother. Honor your father and mother. And we honor, listen, we honor our aging parents 
by giving to their needs. Romans chapter 13 verse 1 tells us to be subject to governing authorities. So we honor governing or civil authorities by paying taxes, by following the laws. When we give to the poor, we honor the Lord and the Lord promises to repay us. In fact, um, I like this passage of scripture in Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17, he who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord. And he will pay back what he has given. Generosity is not just giving. Generosity is giving abundantly and, and, and giving joyfully. The fourth word is the word distributing. Funny. Yes. I hope that's how you spell that. T-R-I-B-U-T-I-N-G. Missed an R. Yeah, there's an R. T-I-S. T-I-S. This just took you. Beauty. Yes. That got that R in there. Disturbing. Disturbing, yeah. Distributing. One of the, 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 uh, uh, one of the Greek words for distributing that's found in the Bible is, uh, Koinoneo. Koinoneo. It has a really rich meaning of, of, of fellowship among believers. It's spelled K O I N O N E A. I wonder if we get the word coin from that. Or coin. So it's koinonia. No, koinonia. Yeah. So that's. Koinoneo. That's not where the word coin comes from. Coincidence. Yeah. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 13. Paul is talking about distributing to the needs of the saints. The word distributing there comes from the Greek word <coughs> koinoneo. Koinoneo. Distributing to the needs of the saints. Distributing. Mm -hmm. Also fellowshipping with, with one another. And then... Uh, and then we have the word grace. Grace. The Gentile believers, Paul commended them for this, were very generous in their distribution of gifts to the saints at Jerusalem. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. And then the, the, the last word, the sixth word, is the word stewardship. The word stewardship. That can go with sowing. <laughs> right? Taking care of the land, your stewardship. Stewardship. Uh, yeah, could be sowing. So, so the concept of, of stewardship is involved in generosity. A steward, a steward is one who is entrusted with the assets of the master and then he is responsible to make a wise investment with those assets and, and a wise steward understands that the assets that he has under his control they don't belong to him right. and they should be returned to the master with increase we have the parable that jesus talked about uh, owner that was leaving and he had three stewards three uh, uh, workers three servants servants <laughs> yeah 
and he gave one ten talents, one five talents, and one one talents. And what happened? One, one doubled. I mean, two of them actually doubled. But the other one did what? He went and he his, came back and gave him just exactly what he had given to him. But God expects an increase on what he gives us. We are, we are stewards of what God has entrusted into us, all of our resources. So, love, sowing, honor, distributing, grace, and stewardship. Now, let's take a look at again, generosity. What are the rewards, rewards of generosity? A lot of people refuse to be generous because they have this this false belief that what they give they lose what they, what I give I lose nope. and uh, the opposite of that is true those who are generous receive far more than they give and, and, and they receive it in a wide uh, range of areas. So what are those uh, areas? Well, first of all, see if I can spell this one right. <laughs> is a bright countenance. A bright countenance. Generosity. Generosity is at the very heart of the nature of God. And because God is light, those who are generous share in his brightness, his countenance. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 22, Proverbs 28, 22, a man with an evil eye hastens after riches and does not consider that poverty will come upon him. Now here's a man who is not generous. But he's always trying to gain more instead of giving more. And then Jesus said in Matthew 6, 22, the lamp that is the light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be what? Full of light. Which one was that? That was in Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. So we, we, we receive a bright countenance. The second thing is a, uh, a special love from the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, God loves a cheerful giver. God loves the church. The, the, the qualities, the uh, motivations are also given in this verse. It says, one, it, it's one who purposes in his heart to give. And the one who gives not grudgingly or out of necessity. In other words, I'm not being forced to give. I'm not giving because you've made me feel guilty. I've got this guilt trip, so I've got to give. No, it, it's one who, who has purposed in his heart that I'm going to give. And he's not giving it grudgingly. That love that God has for, for the giver, that's agape love. That's agape love. I'll call it giving love. So when we give to others cheerfully, God gives back to us. And by the way, I like this. The Greek word for cheerful. Know what it is, anybody? What the Greek word for cheerful? Not, don't give me the Greek word, but what it means. Translated, it means hilarious. Oh. <laughs> 
The Greek word for cheerful in the New Testament means hilarious. It, it means prompt, willing, joyful, hilarious. So when we give, we ought to give hilariously. <laughs> Number three, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. What that is, is the continual awareness that we are in God's presence. And God watches over all that we think, all that we say, all that we do. We can't go anywhere and escape the presence of God. He's always there. No matter where we are, God is there. No matter what we think, God knows it. What we say, God hears it. What, we, what we're watching, what we're seeing, God sees that. And that's what the fear of the Lord is, a continual uh, awareness. And there's three levels, uh, three levels of the fear of the Lord. The first level is this. There's a fear of, of punishment for, do, for, for wrongdoing in his presence. A fear of punishment for wrongdoing in his presence. Secondly, there is a, a fear of, of damaging his reputation. Of damaging his reputation. You know, the Bible says a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, rather than gold, silver. And, and when we become uh, a child of God, we take on God's name. And what we do in this world reflects on him, his reputation. So the, 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 one of the fears of God is a, a fear of damaging his reputation. And then the third one is this, a fear of jeopardizing an intimate relationship with him. That's why, you know, I often said the, the fear of the Lord really is is the awe of the Lord, reverence for God. And that's why we stand in awe and we stand in reverence to God. Because we have that intimate, abiding relationship with Him. Uh, fear of jeopardizing an intimate relationship with Him. Okay, number four is uh, treasures. T-R-E-A-S-U-R-E-S. I was going to put another R-E-S in there. Treasure -er -er -er. <laughs> Treasures in heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, Matthew 6, verses 20 and 21. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth, neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. I once had someone say, how, how do you know? How, how, how do you know what my priorities are in life? How do you know where my heart really is? I said, let me see your checkbook. <laughs> Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. What is priority to you? What do you give the most to? What's your heart? Uh, I had one guy tell me one time, in fact, he was, oh, I'll never will forget this, this dude when I baptized him. He was stood by, he was a rosy Greer type guy. Mm -hmm. First thing I told, I used to wear these hip, I think I would remember this, just wear these hip waders when I baptized people. Because what I did is I baptized them at the beginning of the worship service. We had a baptistry in the, in the church, and I baptized at the beginning of the worship service. And then, uh, and I still wear my suit and tie, and, and it was, that's back then when I wore suit and tie. Now I don't like wearing suit and ties. But 
I, I did, and I would wear that so then when I got through baptizing them, I could get out, just take off the hip waders, still be dry and everything, and put on my jacket and come back out. And uh, the, the, the people filling up the baptistry, I told them the night before, or the day before, when they filled it up, don't fill it up to the normal level you fill it up to. Because, you know, it displaced in the water. Well, they filled it up to where we normally fill it up to. And two things happen that. First of all, he says, and, and, and talking about uh, treasures in heaven and everything, he says, uh, he says, uh, what, what all do, you, do I wear? What all do I take in the baptistry with me? Oh. And I said, well, you just, you can just wear your jeans and t-shirt. That's fine. He said, oh yeah, should I take my wallet and everything? I said, no, keep your wallet in there. We're gonna baptize that too. Good God wants that also. <laughs> But when I got him in there, and, and I said, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'm not going to dunk you over like that because I never pick him back up. <laughs> I'm going to straighten down and up. And when I did, the water came up. Oh. Oh, right into the hip <laughs> <laughs> And, and you know, I like to walk around a lot when I'm teaching or, or no. preaching. That particular Sunday morning, I stood right behind the pulpit the whole <laughs> service. I didn't move to the left or to the right because I was soaking wet. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, thanks, Brian. You both got baptized. Yeah, we both got baptized. Was it a season where you were cold? Was it a winter season? Because when you're wet, you're really cold. No, I don't think it was winter. Well, we were inside the building. So. But still, I mean... But I don't think it was winter. winter time. So, treasures in heaven. Where your heart is, there, there's your treasure is also Matthew or Mark in the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 21 Jesus even reemphasized this when he said to the rich man the rich young ruler go your way sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come, take up the cross and follow me. So the other thing, number five, is we will we will have victory over the root of evil. Victory over the root of evil. Generosity, by the way, breaks the bondage of, of greed. It overcomes uh, the love and, and worship of money. The love of money gives us the, the illusion that our life is made up of the things that we possess. I'm, who I am, what I am, is determined by what I have or how much I have. That's the illusion that we have. And that's what the love of money will, will do for us. We're, we also become guilty of idolatry. When we Expect from money what only God can provide. Security, peace, joy. And number six, is it? Uh, escape from lusts and sorrows. Escape from lusts and sorrows. Uh, First Timothy, First Timothy, chapter six, verses nine and ten. <clears throat> but those who desire to be rich fall into a temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Now notice it didn't say the love of money is evil. It says it is a root of all kinds of evil. For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So as we are more generous then we escape from those lusts, those sorrows. So 
So what is it then that should motivate us to be generous? Well, three things. Three things should motivate, motivate us to uh, by the realization that whatever wealth we have is not the result of our ingenuity, but it's God's generosity towards us. That should motivate me to be generous. Right. Because what I have, I didn't produce it myself. Not yours anyhow. It's not mine, exactly. <clears throat> Also, uh, we should be motivated to generosity because God gives us wealth, so he has the authority to take it back. Job. Job says, you know, God gives, God, God takes away. away. Also, number three is we should be motivated to generosity because we, if we are generous, if we're generous in giving back to God, He protects and increases our wealth. However, if we do not honor God with our increase, we're actually uh, taking what rightfully belongs to Him. Therefore, we are really robbing God. Uh, look at your Bibles in, in the book of Malachi. That's the one that's the, the, the book just before Matthew. Last book of the Old Testament. The book of Malachi. Chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. I'm going to read uh, four verses there. God is having a little father and child talk with Israel. He says this, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. Beginning verse 8, chapter 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God, but you have robbed me? But you say, In what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the ties into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. You know, I, I like that because that is where God really invites us to put him to the test. Test me in this. Try me in this. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven, and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Someone once asked the question, how many of your members in your church time. And the pastor looked at it and he said, 100%. Oh. We have 100% tithing. He says, the only problem with that is some are tithing to God and some are tithing to Satan. Oh. God says, you've robbed me. And so we, uh, uh, we, we should be motivated to give back to God because uh, if we're generous to Him, then he, he protects us. He takes care of us. 
You never can outgive God. And and and, and th that generosity, that giving, doesn't just just mean that I'm to give my tithe to the to the church, but it means I'm to help others that are in need also. Uh, number four, we should be motivated to generosity in order to gain more of Jesus Christ and experience more of his power in our life. The Apostle Paul said that it was for the goal that, that it was for that goal to, to experience Christ more, to experience more of the power of, of God in his life. He says in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, he talks about this. And he says that it was for that goal that he suffered the loss of all things. So, what are the steps? There, now we go to the steps. The generosity. How can I become more generous? What are the steps of generosity? Number one is that we should dedicate all our resources. To God. We should dedicate all our resources to God. That's the first step. We need to surrender our rights of ownership of all of our resources, including our money, our time, our possessions, our strength, our families. All that I have in my bank account, it's not mine. It's God's. He's entrusting that to me as a steward of that. That car that I drive doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. He's loaned it to me for doing His work. The house that we live in doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. My children and grandchildren do not belong to me. It belongs to God. They belong to God. And that's something that Helen and I did years and years ago. So we dedicated and, and surrendered ownership because for, for years I have always felt this is what I've earned. This is what I've worked hard for and, and, and earned, trying to build up. For my family, I earned all this stuff. I did all this hard work and all this stuff and everything, and I realized that it's not me. Because number one, God gave me the talent to do what I needed to do. He gave me the the, the uh, He empowered me with the uh, gifts that I needed to do the work that I did. He gave me the energy, the health that I had. Everything came from Him. What about the helper? Yeah, the helper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the helper. So what we did was we, one night, we just, we just got down and prayed to God and said, God, we surrender everything to you. The, 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 the house that we're living in doesn't belong to us. The car that we drive doesn't belong to us. Our children don't belong to us. God, you have given us the, the preciousness of life into our lives, our children. You've loaned them to us for all. You could take them away anytime. You could take them away tonight. If you did, we'd be sad, but, but the fact is, they're not ours to hold on to. They're yours. And felt a great relief as we surrendered that all to him. And it, it, it's really nice. And, and, and I've really learned that a, a lot from, uh, I, some of you may have seen it. Uh, it's called The Pineapple Story with... Uh, What's this? Coney. 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 Yeah. It's really great. Funny. But uh, the thing is now, there's a sense of really, my car, somebody backed into my car and messed up the back end of it. Did I get upset about that? I used to. I used to come out and look what they did to my car. They damaged my car. And I just like say, God, look what they did to your car. <laughs> And, and uh, you know, somebody wants to rob or steal from me, I, I, I would say, hey, look, if you want to take it because it's not mine to give, and, and what you're doing, you're not stealing from me, you're stealing from God. And I'll tell you something, 
God can do so much worse to you than I can. So if you want it, go ahead. God, look what they did to your car. You know, the tree comes through our roof of our house one year. It's God. Yeah. Look, look what the tree did. <laughs> look what happened to our roof, to, to your roof. Your roof. It's got all messed up now. Those guys damaged my race car. God's race car. Yeah, God's race off. car. Yeah. Yeah. They damaged his race car. Did that. And damaged his racer, too. <laughs> You see what I'm trying to say, folks, is we don't own it. It doesn't belong to us. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. And we need to, we need to dedicate and to relinquish ownership of what we have to God. And I'll tell you what, it, 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 it just re really uh, takes a big, takes all those monkeys off your back. Secondly, we need to uh, practice personal Frugality. Practice personal frugality. What does that mean? Well, be frugal. Be frugal. <laughs> yeah. I've, and this is a place where I've had to learn. I've had to learn my lesson on this too. We spend as little as we can on ourselves so that we can have as much as possible available to reinvest in the ways that will bring multiplied returns. Spend less on ourselves, be able to give more to advance the kingdom of God. Practicing frugality. And then we need to give as God directs. We need to give as God directs. See, the, the, the goal, the goal of generosity is to demonstrate the love of God so that others can be drawn to Him. And when we, when we know of a person who has a need and God prompts us to give an anonymous gift that meets the need, God is glorified. And we are in line for eternal rewards. Because here's the thing. As we bless others, God blesses us. Someone wants to bless you, don't turn them down. Because you become a blessing thief. You steal the blessing that God wants to give them for blessing you. As we bless others, God blesses us. However, if we give for the purpose of, of public praise, then we receive the praise of people, but we lose out on the greater blessings and rewards from God. People that are always doing things to be in the spotlight. You know some of those folks, they're always saying, hey, look what I did, look what I did. You know, the Pharisees were like that. They'd stand on the corner, ring the bells, and pray, look what I'm doing, I'm so good. And, and look pitiful when they're fasting. Yeah, and look pitiful when they're fasting and everything. And, and you know, you know the, the thing that God would you know, reply to them is, hey, you got your reward here from men. That's all you get. I would rather get my reward from the Lord. As you know, as we said, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns it all, everything. He's in a better position to give me greater rewards than anyone else. Generosity. Generosity is God's highway to prosperity. Stinginess is our pathway to poverty. I like a couple of quotes. I want to close with these quotes. And then. John Bunyan once said, A man there was, and they called him man. The more he gave, the more he had. 
Sir Winston Churchill once said, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. How true that is. Generosity. What is generosity? Highway to prosperity. Huh? That? Highway to prosperity. Highway to prosperity, yeah. The right kind. Yes. Prosperity. So, what are your thoughts? Comments? Questions? We got good lesson. It was a good lesson this time. Generosity. I think it teaches us a lot about how we <clears throat> Koinonia with um, EA at the end is a fellowship, but the Koinoneo uh -huh. uh, is to share with others. Yeah. And just yeah, distributed to the needs of the saints. Koinoneo and Koinoneo. Thank you, Brian. Simply put, I wrote down it. To let my light shine so I can create a contact for those in darkness. Exactly. That's, a, that's really simple. That's yeah. Really oh, yeah. I've noticed uh, at the workplace occasionally, people, some people don't like me. They actively don't like me. I, I've been told I have a, uh, they're always cheerful. I'm always cheerful. I'm always upbeat. And it offends and, and angers some people. But I know that I'm still to be that one. Exactly. No matter what circumstances around me, to be, to be cheerful, to be a good to be positive. We'd be a bright light. And, and there again, the only way you can be a really, really bright light is to be close to Christ. To so stay close to Him. Each day. You know? Because the closer you are to Him, the brighter your light's going to be. And the brighter your light is, the farther it's going to shine and be drawn more people to Christ. Because Remember what I've always said? We're either drawing people to Christ or we're drawing people to Christ. What are the two? No, it's not going to be. Well, and they might be resisting that right now, but usually you can't resist that kind of thing. I'm sorry, you what? They might be resisting her right now, but they usually won't resist her for like forever. Because yeah. usually that does slowly have an effect. It does. Yes. Yeah. You know, they're in a dark place, so they're resisting it. But most people I know, if you persist, they get into it. No, and, and, and don't ever give up. You know, the Bible says don't, don't become weary and do it good. For in due time, you'll reap a harvest. If you don't give up. And, and, and here's a key thing. Don't ever give up on anyone that you're praying for to come to Christ or witnessing to. We had a young man come to our church years and years ago. And uh, he and his wife were originally married there by the former, the original pastor of the church. And then he came back, and I was sitting in my office. He came in, and he says, I, we'd like to renew our marriage vows here in this church, because it's the church we got married in. I said, fine. And so then they started coming. His wife was a, a believer, and he was not. And so I started, I, I just had this burden on my heart to start praying for him. Start witnessing, just praying for him, praying for him. And, and a year went by, no change. Two years went by, no change. Finally, it was like five years later that he came to me and he said, uh, I would like to, uh, we want to enroll our daughter in this Christian school, but I really need to know what they're going to be teaching her there and everything. So I gave him a copy of the thing called the Jesus film. And I says, uh, I, your, your daughter ought to watch it. He said, you know, as her dad, you ought to sit and watch it with her. Ooh, why? <laughs> so that you will know what they're going to be teaching. And so he did. That next Sunday morning, we gave an invitation at the end. And he come down the aisle, tears falling from his face and gave his heart to Christ. Five years of not giving up, praying, but for him, witnessing to him every chance I could. Don't give up. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again we thank you for this lesson and what you teach us about letting our light shine and doing that through our generosity and through our good works. 
Father, now as we go into the, to the morning service uh, and uh, just learn more about, uh, about you as we kind of finish up the series that we're in, I pray that you'd open our hearts, open our minds, give us wisdom to apply what we learned this morning in our lives. That we truly might be bright, shining beacons in this world to attract the lost to you. In Jesus' name.